Hey everyone, this is our second episode of looking into Azure Lighthouse from different perspectives. Today we're taking the perspective of the ISV or the independent software vendor who, just like you, may have issues with deploying, managing, and supporting their workload in a customer's subscription. So if this is a scenario that uh, you find interesting or that you're experiencing right now, stay tuned because we're going to be talking with Joseph Mascaro from Sage about this very subject. Stay tuned. Hello, Joseph. How are you? Very well, thanks. And you? Uh I'm fine. I'm fine. I uh, hope uh, you're back from vacation. I hope that was a good time for you. Yeah, it was great. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> so you are an ISV or what they uh, refer to as independent software vendor. Yeah. Uh, what is your usage of Lighthouse? Yeah. So uh, traditionally, uh, Sage has hosted many customer installations inside the the Sage instances of Azure. So, mm -hmm. and then it's right, uh, it's really easy for us to manage everything because we own uh, the main credentials. We are global administrators and when it's easy for us to manage all this stuff, right? But since um, probably one year and a half ago, since Sage started to move uh, to the SPC program, that is the Sage Partner Cloud program, is a way to provide, okay, so instead of uh, Sage managing all the infrastructure and everything, which initially is close to other business partners to do some additions. So then why don't we extend this, uh, the mechanism, the hosting platform that we have right now to our partners, right? Okay. And based on that is when uh, we face the first uh, blocker in which, right? Because right now we are able to spin up and create new resources in our subscriptions because we own them. We have the global administrator and so on. But then we said, okay, but if we are using someone else uh, subscription, we cannot do that. We need some global admin permissions and we don't want that from, from there. Yeah. You know? And that's why uh, we have some discussions with uh, Microsoft and is when they uh, pointed out to say, okay, why are you are not using Lighthouse, which is uh, a service that allows you to do something in someone else's subscription without having um, a, a global administrator, yeah, yeah. Uh, passwords, secrets, and so on. And that's why, uh, that's why we started uh, to work on that. Because as I said, right now we are deploying our solution for our business partners in their subscriptions. So Sage doesn't own them. And then we are able to spin up new resources like virtual machines, storages, databases, backups, and whatever required for us to work. And not only this, we are also provide the, the ability to extra services or manage services for the partners. Uh, related to backups and restoring and all these actions uh, that are related to the normal maintenance of uh, an updates of the of, of uh, an installation a custom installation and and actually uh, the users the lighthouse actually allows us to do that in a controlled way because the business partner has to consent sage to access to the subscription because mm -hmm. uh, we need to first have this uh, consent from them, and they are aware of that. We are doing this uh, running a, a PowerShell uh, that is with, with a template and so on. Maybe it's not very user friendly, but we are adding some extra stuff in that PowerShell related to registering some other services that we need uh, to spin up new things, right? Okay. And when this consent is granted, the 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 our business partner is also the owner of that, they can remove at any moment. Mm -hmm. So because they can say, I, I'm not happy with that, or I don't want, they can remove. They are the owner of the subscription. And all uh, and all we have, uh, there is the, the, the power, let's say, to do all the required actions to spin up new uh, custom installations. And as I said, many as many resources to make our financial and accounting solutions to work there. So okay. that's uh, 
that's basically the the usage we are uh, we are giving to uh, to lighthouse and actually i think it's a uh, quite pretty it fits very well in what we wanted to do mm -hmm. so so uh, other than the facility of you being able to deploy your solution into your customer's description or your partner's description mm -hmm. um has there been any uh other significant benefits to starting using lighthouse um actually uh the fact of having uh a unified logs uh okay our auditing and um, to be able to troubleshoot if, because some things that are issues and probably deploying this infrastructure and so on is something that al allows you to see what's going on mm -hmm. and i think this is an important thing to have a unified way to see for that business partner that uh, this for us a business partner can uh, host several customer installations so then it's easy also for us to go there and uh, deep dive in in case of emergency trying to find out and for troubleshooting i think that's a really interesting point but okay. mainly but mainly we are using uh, we are supposed to uh, deploy these in a you know arm templates and so on they are quite uh, robust and well uh, hopefully there is not much uh, usage of this uh, login but i think that's uh, that's another of the benefits of using lighthouse okay so you've got uh, ability to deploy uh a a anywhere with proper um authorization and access uh cu customers that can or partners that if they're not happy because it's their own subscription can basically manage your access yeah. and then logs that so that the customer and you uh, have a, an audit trail of everything Correct. that was done. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, what has been the feedback from your customers at this point versus uh, the old model that you had where you deployed everything in your own subscription? Well, actually, the, if we deploy in our own subscription, uh, then the partners that have probably new add-ons to uh, to add there, they they didn't have access to do that. So right now, that's why Sage opened this to the the partners to maybe install uh, on the virtual machines that we are basically providing other uh, add-ons that may be more specific for project management. That maybe this is something mm -hmm. that we are not managing and other uh, utilities that may they may use so so far i think it has a good uh, a good act, uh, yeah, they accept this uh, very well and uh, i think with, there is a, a lot of things to to discover in the next in the next months because we have just launched that um, i think 6 months ago and the partners are still being familiar and educating and moving on on that so but i think it's an interesting uh, way of extending and including other third-party uh, business partners engaged in the business, you know, okay, to, to extend uh, the product. So, so if I get it right, you're you're deploying your solution into the partner's uh, environment or your customer's right. environment, and then because it's their environment, they have access to add Correct. to put in their own add-ons or, or third-party add-ons, which they would not be able if exactly. they were in your own subscription. That's exactly that's correct. That's correct. I, I had never thought about it. That's that's, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think that's a, a a good initiative, and also I think Lighthouse help us to also to do that. So great, but yeah, because uh, we are the the products that we are deploying are uh, are let's say uh, desktop on premise products. Okay, right, uh, and we are providing this. Uh, cloud capabilities to this these desktop products because uh, as i said from that point we are able to spin up uh, new new sites very i think with a few clicks yeah. and then provide all the backup and all these extra let's say cloud more cloud services to the to our end partners and customers that's great um if there was one thing that you'd say, or is there are there anything that in Lighthouse uh, is working for you, but there are things that you'd wish uh, would either be added or modified? Uh, well, with Lighthouse, I think right now the granularity is uh, the, at subscription level and then our resource group level. But you cannot go, for example, on top of that. You cannot manage anything related to Active Directory, for example. Okay. 
So this is uh, this is something that I don't know if this could be extended uh, to, uh, with Lighthouse, uh, or maybe there are other limitations that uh, I'm not aware of. Right? Okay, and when you mean uh, make changes to Active Directory, you mean like adding users and adding groups? And... Exactly, yes, exactly. These basic actions, let's say, to add users, groups, and, and this kind of uh, things that right now uh, is not possible at this moment. Okay, so uh, when the when that need happen, what you just tell your customers will go add this user and yeah. add this group. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so yeah. It's, it's an added layer of yeah. of uh, manual steps or exactly. complexity. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So Joseph, the uh, you mentioned the fact that uh, Lighthouse has allowed you to uh, let your customers or you let your partners uh, do add on. Like, what has been in, in in retrospect, looking at before Lighthouse and now with Lighthouse, what's the business impact that you've seen for your company? Uh, basically, as I mentioned, initially Sage uh, hosted in their own subscriptions all the infrastructure. So then the business partners uh, have no access to do anything there. And uh, the idea to uh, to deploy the, the Sage Partner Cloud program is just to give the partners the ability to uh, extend and build on top of Sage solutions, other add-ons uh, um, from other third-party companies, ISVs, to give a complete or a, a full set of uh, capabilities uh, application to the customer. So, as I that did... translated in your business partners actually suggesting or promoting your solutions more to their own customers. Or I wouldn't say that is is to provide to the end customers a complete uh, enterprise solution for financial and uh, and accounting. So imagine that uh, maybe a, a company that needs uh, extra project management and maybe yeah. the solution from Sage from a specific country is not providing that. So at least the the partner will have the ability, the, our business partner will have the ability to install this uh, project management solution just to. Uh, meet the customer the end customer requirements so, so that's uh, it's a lot more and customize yeah a lot more collaborations between you Correct. and your partners exactly exactly yeah that's that's very cool and and i i can assume that uh that your customers are are very happy to have that that pick and choose kind of uh, approach to okay i need this and this uh and this partner can provide the uh third part that i need for my right. solution and uh, be able to collect with that, and you be able to su uh, to supply the 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 foundation for that exactly. collaboration to be that. Exactly, that that's correct. Yeah, that's probably the to have a to to meet as much as possible all the customer requirements and of of uh, their business needs. You know, that's wonderful. Well, uh, Joseph, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, speak with us uh, today, and. Uh, have a great day. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you much for the opportunity. Thank you. So the conversation with Joseph Mascaro from Sage uh, really kind of went through how ISVs can leverage Lighthouse uh, for the benefits of their customers and partners. Now let's bring in Arkana Balashkrishnan and gonna give us a, a quick demo on some of the popular ways uh, or scenarios that are being used by ISV with Lighthouse. Hi, Arcana. Hey, Pierre. Thank you for having me on here. Um, no so yeah. what, what do you got to show me for today? Yeah, so I, I want to show you just maybe one super popular use case that we've seen ISVs use uh, Azure Lighthouse with. Okay. Um, as you know, a lot of ISVs, uh, you know, deploy their apps and provide solutions to customers. Um, a common thing that customers end up asking their ISV partners are is related to support, right? Yeah. Um, hey, ISV partner, uh, I've got this app from you. Uh, can you offer like end-to-end -end support, which includes managing, let's say, issues related to Azure as well, right? So mm -hmm. the customer isn't wanting to go to the ISV partner for issues related to the apps and then go to Microsoft separately for issues relating to Azure. Um, and many times they would just rather go to the ISV partner. 
Um, in these scenarios, what the ISV partner can do is, you know, they can get just enough and just right access with Azure Lighthouse to their customer. So in this case, you know, we can pretend I'm an ISV yep. uh, and I'm managing a customer called Microsoft. And as I'm managing Microsoft's customer subscription, you know, uh, I have an issue with, you know, I, I've, I've got a ticket from Microsoft to me. Um, and I basically know that there is an issue in this particular subscription that Microsoft has asked me to deploy their app into. Right. Okay. And so as part of it, uh, you know, I also get access to support uh, requests. So without having to, you know, go to the customer or direct the customer back to Microsoft, I can now directly on behalf of the customer, right, um, say what my issue is, right? So let's say there is an issue with Kubernetes configuration because I'm using um, you know, Kubernetes for my app. And so um, I can select a technical issue in here. And then when it comes to selecting the subscription, I can pick subscription that the customer has given me access to, right? Okay. And so in this case, I'm literally gonna pick the same subscription that the customer has given me access to. I'm gonna go and say, hey, I have an issues with my, you know, Kubernetes um, AKS service right and then i can kind of go through the rest of the um rest of the you know all the information that i need to provide this is again a huge value add right because as the isv i don't need to coordinate and kind of uh, go between me and the customer tell the customer to take this back to microsoft i'm doing everything together which really reduces that you know support uh, supportability um, response times, yep. resolution times, et cetera, right? Um, and so this is this is a very popular use case. In fact, a lot of our ISVs that are using Lighthouse to provide, you know, these kind of advanced support services to um, really uh, have, you know, been able to add that additional value to their customer. And it also adds more value to them. Um, as you can see here, you know, this this basically auto selects the support plan as well, right? So as I'm going through the support scenario as the ISV, I'm still leveraging the customer support plan. So let's say the customer has an EA agreement and they have like, you know, uh, higher supportability plans with Microsoft. It just basically means that the ISV is able to leverage what the customer has uh, mm -hmm. in terms of support plans. And yet they are the technical folks who have the know how who have the information relating to the ticket and so this really speeds up the supportability process uh this is just one of the many useful ways that you know isvs are leveraging azure lighthouse um, with their customers today i you know what arcana i love that uh, one of my old roles at microsoft i was in premier uh and i dealt with enterprise support and this was one of the really sticking point is when you have a customer on one side and a partner on the other side and there's a problem with the solution and then it's like okay can you ask the partner to give me this log can you ask when the partner says can you ask microsoft to check this and you're being the go between as a customer that's not a uh, it's not a position first of all that the customer wants to be in but it's also not necessarily their expertise so having the isv take over that entire and be the single point of contact for the support is huge. Absolutely pure. Yeah, you've experienced it personally as well, right? And uh, absolutely, uh, <laughs> you know, the changing of hands uh, is, is, is a troublesome problem. And, you know, Joseph briefly mentioned this as well, but this is, you know, the activity log, right? Uh, what has happened in the subscription? Uh, there is a single source of truth with Azure Lighthouse. The activity is written into the subscription, right? So in case yep. of issues, um, the ISV, maybe a downstream managed services partner, the customer, Microsoft, we're all seeing the same thing, right? And that, you know, all the activities are logged and you can see, you know, who the event was initiated by, um, you know, I'm showing you the activity log, but you can go to log analytics and look at all of this kind of from a single source of truth and yet have this collaboration across multiple parties across the whole Microsoft ecosystem come together, right? Uh, which is really powerful, especially in the support scenario to solve the pain point that you've experienced previously. Yes, that's, that's huge. Um, thank you very much for showing me this because 
I had not really thought about the support implication of Lighthouse uh, with ISVs, but now that you mention it, I do see uh, an absolute benefit to both the ISV and the customers. So that's just great. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Pierre. So thank you very much, Arcana, for showing us uh, that support, um, those demos on how ISVs uh, and Microsoft can help support our customers. Uh, thank you very much. It was great. And for you out there, stay tuned for more content regarding Azure Lighthouse.